Now, let's say I wanted to do a voiceover. This is something that you know, I, I want to highly recommend everybody. The, the audio you're hearing right now is not coming off the camcorder. The camcorder is sitting about three and a half, four feet behind my head. I'm turned toward the camcorder now. Now I'm back toward my screen. Right now as I'm doing this commentary, I'm using this little baby right here. This is a Zoom H2. This is an old one. It's kind of beat up. I've got about six of these things that I use for doing concerts and stuff. Um, I'm here to tell you it's really great to use audio uh, separately from your video. And uh, even if you're doing an interview of yourself, let's say that you have your, your own head on the screen, the camcorder's back five feet away from you, put a mic about two feet in front of you, kind of out of the field of view, and match that video up. I'm going to show you maybe in, the ne in one of the next clips how to really synchronize your audio nice and tight if you're doing an interview. And uh, so anyway, this is, this is just the beginning, folks. Let's talk real quickly about how we might want to output this piece of video at the end. So let's get here to the end. We, you know, first of all, we've not pulled any GoPro video into this. I did want to show you how, even though it's totally unrelated to this guy here and what he's talking about, these are GoPro clips up here that I pulled in. The first one I think was my, my boss's dogs. And it's kind of cool. we got these, these cute little schnauzers here. Let's show just a second of the schnauzers. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take, uh oh, look, my ins and outs are messed up. I, I pull up, pull this back over this way. Now I'll be able to see my ins and outs again. I'm going to put an in right here. We're going to go. <laughs> Did you hear me? Did you hear me like ridiculously stutter there? I have to confess, I was a stuttering kid. Sometimes when I get excited about puppies, I still stutter. And they get along just great. Yeah. So there we got our cute schnauzers. I'm going to put an out here. Uh, this makes no sense, this bit of video, put it in here, but I just wanted you to see that the GoPro Hero 3 video <laughs> comes in just perfectly and works just great with uh, with this uh, other video that I shot here off of a Canon camcorder. And, uh, and this brings in this brings up another issue. Now, like right here, I can see these are 1920 by 1080s. So you would expect that to be easy enough. But look here. Here's some 2704 by 1536. This is what's called 2.7K video. And, of course, the Hero 3 will shoot this crazy. It'll shoot 4K video. It'll shoot 2.7K. It shoots 1440p, lots of different sizes. But let's say I wanted to use this 2.7K video, which is much larger than 1080p in this uh, sequence down here. Well, I can double click on it and I can find my ins and outs. This would be a driving tour of Morganton on here. It was a rainy day. Actually, I'm coming out of Walmart shopping center. Oh Lord, this was, this was, this was miserable. But let's, let's say I want to show myself driving out of, of Walmart shopping center. I'll put it in here. I'm going to go for it. Now you can see what all's involved in this, right? You see my dashboard, my windshield wipers, all this that's in here. I'm going to stop right there and put an out. So I have a much larger piece of video than 1080. 1080p would kind of fit just kind of inside this right here. And all this extra, because I have all these extra pixels. But I'm going to pull this video down onto this timeline. Now it did not change this sequence. It's still a 1080p sequence. Look at this. See how you're not seeing the inside of my, uh, of my dashboard here on this. You're just seeing this much, right? That's because now you've got... 2.7K video inside, and there's actually pixels on the outside of this right here. It's too big for the, but this that's kind of cool. What's really kind of cool about this is you've got video you can scale here now. And I might as well show you this. You know, this is kind of a very advanced uh, thing, to, but if you're going to be using various different kinds of video, for instance, GoPro video, it's nice to know you can scale this video in Premiere. I'm going to click on this piece of video. And I'm going to go up to Effects Control again. I'm going to go up here where Motion is. I'm going to twirl down the little arrow here beside Motion. And see where I have Scale here? I happen to know that 71% shows all. If you want to take 2.7K video down to make it fit in 1080p, 71% uh, of, of 2.7K is 1080p. That's just me. I just know that. <laughs> but if I want this to be like 80%, I can just slide it. What I'm doing here, if I if I take my little cursor, my little finger, and get over the 76, I can go up and down on this. Probably you don't want to go more than that, you know, because then you're, you're artificially making pixels go up and they look a little fuzzy. I will say this. You can scale up in Premiere Pro usually to about 120%. 
and it looks really nice and you and you you don't get the artificial fuzzy pixel situation but I'm gonna go back down to about 80 percent I just wanted you to know that you can do that if you have different sized pieces of videos even different frame rates different everything you can uh, resize them and you can resize them over time too so that's kind of a cool thing I like to do with my GoPro video now, now, you know, here's another thing I could bring up. It's some just some basic navigation tips that can help you. Um, sure. Let's say you want to get right on that first frame of that video there, and you want to edit it or something. You want to do some things over the amount of time, and you don't want to have to just. It's hard sometimes to drag to just that right point, even when you zoom in. I, there's there's some are some um, little tools here that are advanced tools that I like to use. And when you first bring your Premiere Pro up, it's probably not going to look like this down here. I actually sort of customized this. I added some buttons that I like to use. There's a button called Go to Next Edit Point that is great to bring in. If you click this little plus here, you'll have this thing called a button editor. It'll show you a bunch of buttons. I'm going to hit cancel for right now that you can add to this down here. You may only have six or seven buttons like your play button and your back button, stuff like that. These are all buttons I would recommend you have. These are the ones that I've used over the years that are very important to me. This is one where you can just take a picture, snap a picture out. If I wanted to picture that dog, I could go to where the dog looks really good or somewhere where this guy here, if I want a picture of him, I can click that and it will export a bitmap or a JPEG and all that. I'm not going to do that just now. But this one, next one right here is called Go to Next Edit Points. So if I want to make sure, if I want to go to that little spot right there or this next spot or the very end, I can click that and it jumps to those, to jumps to those cuts or it goes backward. This is very helpful to be able to do this. It is, it's even going to like, you know, where I have my transitions and stuff together there. So I'm going to go back to this one. What I wanted to do here, I wanted to show you kind of how you can change position and scale over time. And this is something you'll find very important. Uh, this is a very advanced little thing I'm showing you here. But even for the beginner, I think you'll find it really cool, especially if you're using GoPro video. Let's say that I want this video to start at, at actual size. We've already talked about the fact that at 100%, it's much bigger than what'll fit in 1080p. But I say I want this thing to zoom out. And you know, GoPro Hero 3 does not have zoom on it. So you can't really zoom out unless you buy some, some uh, there's some gear you can buy and modify them. But let's say I want this to, to zoom out like I'm zooming out with my uh, a lens. And I want to show the full width of this whole frame here. What I can do is up here where I've twirled down position, there's a, there's, I'm going to close this back up for a second just to show you. I'm going to click on the little, go to motion, click the little arrow here. I'm going to click on the little toggle animation thing. It looks like a little stopwatch. I'm going to click on that for position and scale. So now what I've done, I've told it that this is, that this right here is what I want to look like to start, right? Now I'm going to pull forward a little bit in this piece of video. I want to pull back. At this point, I want to be able to see all of the pixels that are there. As I mentioned before, 71% would do that. So I'm going to go 71. And watch what happens here now. Now I've got the effect of having a zoom. And I don't have a zoom. I hear a three. Oh, let's say I want this to zoom. I say I want this to set for a second and zoom back out or zoom back in. Uh, the thing is that you have to do here is since we've, we've just done scale, we've not done position, I could have actually moved the piece of video around. I'll show you that later. But I do want to put a keyframe in here. This little add keyframe. That tells it that between this frame and this frame, nothing happens. It's going to sit still, right? Now, this keyframe, I want to start zooming back in again. So I'm going to go to the end of this clip. I'm going to click my little go to next edit point. And then I'm going to go back to 100%. So now watch what I have here. This is pretty cool. It zooms out. It stops for a second. It zooms back in. That's pretty cool. Uh, so here you go, folks. I've given you just, just a bit to get you started. We've got titles. We've got uh, transitions. We've got some audio editing, some changing audio gain. We've got uh, basically how to trim the clips. Um, and how to maybe do some panning, zooming, basic color grading. Uh, that's enough to get you started, and we'll start another a little slightly more advanced uh, and, and go down the rabbit hole even a little bit further. But hopefully with this, you'll be able to see how to uh, do at least basic editing. The last thing I do want to talk about, though, is so now we've edited, so what? How are we going to get this out to the world? 
So I'm going to save my uh, project again by hitting the Control S. You're going to you're going to always when you export, you're going to click on this window down here because these are where all of your edits are. So this is the window that has to be active, and so you have the the yellow around it. I'm going to go up to File, Export. Here we go. Sorry, Media. And what's going to come up is this uh, media window here. Now we can, we can if we wanted to, we could go to the thing called Q down here, and we could we could do a whole bunch of different videos and set up a Q. So maybe we'll do that in another video too. I only have a 28 second. This the whole thing's only 28 seconds. So, but I'm going to go ahead and just tell you how I typically do it for YouTube and for almost everything else. I use the H.264 format. That might not come up automatically, but that's the one I always pick. H.264, still one of the best codecs. Codec is a code decode program that compresses the video. And I'm going to give you just some good standard general rules for what you might want to do. And I have a much more detailed video on uh, encoding that you can see on my channel. First of all, it's going to say, where does, is this video going to go? I've got training MP4. Uh, let's put that in that very folder. So here's my Premiere Pro CC training. I'm going to double click that. So training one is going to go in here. I'm going to say save. It's not saving it yet. It's just telling it where to go. I know that this is a 1080p. So if I click on this right here, I can go down. And I can pick from all kinds of different presets. Uh, and you might want to use presets just to start. A good one to use since we're in 1080p is this HD 1080p 2997. Now, the main thing for YouTube in particular you want to do is you want to make sure that progressive is selected down here. Right now it's grayed out, but if you had even what's called interlaced video, I won't get too deep into that, but if your video were 1080i, you'd still want to go progressive for YouTube. And and it will YouTube will or the Premiere Pro will turn your interlaced video into progressive video. And it looks very nice. But we know 1920 by 1080 is what we're working with. Um, you, if you pull this little bar down, you can see more of this. Or if you pull this down, you can see more of it too. So that preset that I picked, this uh, 1080p 2997, is going to encode at 32 megs per second. And uh, uh, that's your target bit rate. And your, uh, your bottom bit rate is going to be 40. <clears throat> A lot of times for YouTube, you don't have to do this much. You could even get by with 18 on this bottom down here if you want to make it smaller. This is going to be 107 megs. If you're using a longer video, sometimes you want to encode less. I would say typically for YouTube 1080p video, if you're encoding 16, 18 megs per second, it looks just fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave it this. It's way more uh, quality than it probably needs. But then again, it's not bad to give YouTube more quality than they need because they're going to recompress your video anyway. From an audio point of view, this one's going to go 192 kilobytes per second, which is pretty good. Usually anything over 128 is is, uh, is acceptable. I don't usually go to 128. I usually use, either use 192, 256, something like that. So this is pretty good. You've got uh, nice encodings. This would be a good rule of thumb to go ahead and use this one. Uh, unless you're doing a real long video, then you might want to consider bumping this down some, and it will greatly affect the size of the video. I'll just show you. Let's say I went to 20 with this. It goes from 107 down to 67, but still that's going to be a good looking video. But for right now, I'm going to go back to 32. That's okay. So what we've got, we've got the video going where it's supposed to go. I'm going to say export, and it's going to encode this video. First thing it did there was it encoded the audio. Now we've got some transitions, and we've got some color grading, and we've got some uh, movement zooming in and out, so it's going to take a little while for this to render. The more stuff you've done to the video, the more you've edited color, the more you've changed size, the more you've added transitions, the more you've uh, you know finagled around with it, the longer it's going to take this thing to render, because it's actually applying effects to each individual frame, 30 frames per second, or 29.97, if you want to be more specific. It's going to get to the end. You're going to think it's done. It's going to take a little bit longer to do it because it actually writes the file during this portion right here. So there we should be done. So where is the video? I'm going to say File, Save again. The video is where we seen it. It's in that folder. So let me pull a folder open. Here we go down to Premiere Pro CC Training. And here is our training video. Let's double click on it and take a look.
and they get along just great. <laughs> I chuckled myself that that uh, that uh, stuttering. There you go, folks. Quick little lesson to get you started. Uh, there's a whole lot more we can go into, and maybe I will. I'll watch this video myself and try to determine what other bits and pieces I should put in this video to get you down the road. But this will get you started with at least a few, uh, at least the basics of being able to edit and put together a good video. Let your now go it forth and let your imagination take you to places you'd only dreamed it could possibly go. And share with me your videos. I'd love to see them and, and share with my, the folks that are my subscribers. So anything you do, send me a link. I, I love to look at, at it and let me know what you think of the uh, tutorials. If you have any questions, just throw them my way. I'll try to uh, put them out there for you. I love to share you know, as, as much knowledge as I have, which is very limited, but you know I've been doing this for a good long while, so I do know, know a few little, little tricks. There's still a few tricks in my old bag. So anyway, peace to all, cheers, and uh, stay in touch.